Okay, hi everyone. So today we're going to be talking about static variables. All right. So static variables. What are static variables? Well, let's take a look at uh, at uh, a particular class here called account. Okay. So we've got an account here. Account like a bank account has an ID, so a number, and the name of the owner for that bank account. And uh, and then we have a, a a constructor right here, which basically says that when we're creating an account, we need an ID and we need the uh, the name of the owner. And we're going to create a, uh, a local attribute for both ID and owner that will be available within whatever object is created from, from the account class. Now, we're going to have an account tester. So this is going to be another class that uses account. All right. So we're going to have uh, ACC1, which is an object, and ACC2, which is another object of type account. And in the first case, ACC1, so account1, is going to have an ID of one and we'll have an owner's name of Jim. And the second account will have an ID of two and we'll have a name of Jeremy associated with it. Okay, so those are the owners and the, the, the ID numbers of those two accounts. Then, then we do a little print line to make sure that uh, things aren't, uh, things are, you know, not equal to each other. Okay, so that the IDs are different because that's important that, that, um, that these accounts have different IDs. Okay, so we don't get them mixed up. Now, we can do this, but then we have to manually generate the IDs for each single one. And typically when we're talking about bank accounts or things like that, we create them in a sequence. And, and so every time you create one, you should just generate the ID in the sequence as we create them. So how would we go about doing that? Well, one way to do it is to use static variables. And static variables in some ways are like global variables that are available um, to, they're the same value that, that is available to all instances of that class. Okay, so it's a, a variable that's basically shared among different instances of the class. So for instance, if we're to do, set it up this way, well, basically what you'd have is that uh, you start by having an integer called global counter, and it's got, it starts with a value of one. It's called static, okay? It's, uh, it's being modified to, to be sort of across all instances. So we use the word static. And, um, and we still have the ID and we still have the owner name and we have these accounts. And so during in, when we use the constructor, what we say is the ID is equal, equal to global counter, which was defined over here. And then as soon as we do that, we increment global counter. So every single time that you construct, okay, you call a constructor. So every time you construct a new object, global counter will get incremented. All right, and, and basically you take the old value of it, you assign it to this object that was just created, okay? And, and then you change it so that the next time uh, an object is, is created, it will use that value of global counter, okay? And this way, every time a new object is created, it doesn't matter how many objects you create this in the constructor, you will have uh, this, this value that, that is renewed every single time. So basically what ends up happening here is that the ID number for Jim will be one, for Jeremy it'll be two, and the next time if we had ACC3 for Elsa, Elsa would have, uh, if Elsa came right after Jeremy, then Elsa would have an account ID of three, etc. okay? And that would happen automatically, and we don't have to say it. See, we're not saying it here. It is being taken care of by the constructor inside of the, ob or the, the class. Okay, so each instance of the class has a local copy of each attribute or instance variable like ID. Okay, and uh, and and that way, okay, even though we're we're create, we're using global counter, this ID here won't change internally to whatever um, object is created. That that is created through the constructor and remains inside of the object, whereas global counter that is outside of uh, the object really and it will sort of have a have availability every time you create a new object okay so this is really nice that you basically store a local copy here but you have a global variable that is available elsewhere so a static variable belongs to the class not to the object all instances of the class share a single copy of this static variable. Okay, it is shared among any object that is created. Changes to the global counter via C1 is also visible to C2. All right, so how about this? So we got class account static int global variable or global counter is equal to one. Um, 
And, um, and so basically what we're saying here is that static variable global counter is not instance specific like instance variables like IDs are. All right. To access the static variable, you do not need a context object. You just have to use the name of the class. So right here, the name of the class is account. That's what we're using. We don't have to say, um, what was it? It was ACC1 or ACC2, etc. We don't use those. We don't use the names of the objects. We use the name of the class itself. So the use of the name of the class name suffices. Okay, to be able to access that uh, static variable. Each time accounts constructor is called to create a new instance, the increment effect is visible to all existing objects of account, um, but that local variable ID is going to be unique to each one of those objects. Now, there are possibilities for errors here. Okay, so for instance, if we've got, uh, if we declare, uh, in, in this case, we've got a client uh, class and we have number of accounts for those particular clients, and we declare that as static. Then if we create a new client, Bill, and another new client, Steve, okay, and then we set up these accounts like that, then we say Bill add account ACC1. ACC1 has been created here. Then ACC2 will be created there. Their global counter will be, at this stage, global counter will be one, at this point it'll be two. So um, so then we'll have basically uh, at the first time around it, it, things will be assigned correctly. However, the second time we do it, the counter itself will be incremented, sorry not global counter, the number of accounts, I'm sorry, the number of accounts will be, um, that's because of the plus plus there, the number of accounts, not global counter, it'll be number, it'll be the number of accounts will be incremented to one because it's a static variable. Okay. So in this case, the number of accounts variable is being shared between Bill and Steve when in fact they should be completely separate. So this is a mistake. And so the attribute number of accounts should not be declared as static as its value should be specific to the client object. It should not be static, it should be local to that object. If it were declared as static, then every time the add account method is called, although on different objects, the increment effect of number of accounts will be visible to all client objects. And in a bank situation, you do not want one um, client information to be really linked to another client's information unless there's a really good reason to do. And in this case, it's not. So here's the corrected version. We basically do not make it static. So number of accounts is just a regular integer and it is local to whatever instance object, uh, instance of the class as an object it is. All right, here's another one. So we've got a bank right here. So here's a, a class called bank and uh, the bank itself has a branch name and then it has, uh, because we're gonna be creating accounts, whatever, it has next account number. And then we have a method um, right here that, um, so in, in this case right here, we've got to use account number right here. Um, and we're gonna print out and then we're gonna increment next account number plus plus like that, okay? So next account number is one of these static integers right there. So we've got an issue here. Non-static methods cannot be referenced from a static context. So line four declares that we can call the method user account number without instantiating an object of class bank. That's because it's static, okay? So statics don't require the instantiation of an object. We just have to have a class. However, in line, whoops, line five, the static method reference is a non-static attribute for which we must instantiate a bank object. So that, this gets confusing, all right? So to call use account number, no instances of bank are required, okay? So here we're saying bank dot use account number. Bank is the class name, not an object. Contradictorily, to access branch name, a context object is required. Okay, B1, that's the context. Okay, so to get branch name, you have to have B1. So so basically, you've got this, it's it's not consistent. Okay, and, and that's not a good thing. So there are possibly two ways to fix this. First, remove all uses of non-static variables, like branch name, in the static method, use account number. Otherwise, you could declare branch name as a static variable, 
which you really shouldn't because uh, you can have different branch names okay for banks so, so you don't that doesn't make sense so you really don't want to do that so branch name should be a specific value to it should be a value specific to each bank instance okay and there we have it static variables mm -hmm.